Alrighty, welcome back everybody. For those who missed it, this is the Game 2 for Cornell versus Stony Brook in the Dota Round of 16 playoffs. This championship will, uh, this game, I'm sorry, will lead to the Round of 8, and then the winner of that gets the land ride to the Toronto for the finals. Uh, I am Zingle, and joining me once again is Hachiko. How are you doing, buddy? Alright, what's up? Game one looked pretty simple and easy there for Stony Brook after they got going, and that's kind of their playstyle. You kind if you give them that space where you don't just pile on the pressure and you don't keep killing them, they just get their core items up and then they seem unstoppable after that once they start taking good team fights. Mm -hmm. I mean that did also have to come down to the draft. They had that draft that was very very just you know passive in the early game, but once you get those. Uh, Blink daggers on your two initiators and elk, you know, once elk does elk things, you just get ahead. So it was partly due to the draft, but partly just due to that's how we've always seen their style works, you know, in past games and in this game. Stony Brook just seems like a very solid mid and late game team. Um, as far as this game goes, we see bands coming out that we saw in, picked in the last game. Lena and Lifestealer both taken out of the game. Magnus also taken out of the game. The only, you know, ban from last game that already got banned up this game is the Monkey King, and rightfully so, as that hero is annoying and nobody wants to see it. Much like Techies when Techies was meta. Uh, for picks, Big Red Bears, Cornell had first pick. They went for Coddle. This hero has taken, you know, a resurgence in the meta because you can just blinding light all game. We saw... Kind of like the, the Lena did last game, where you just take over the lane once your carry leaves and you just flash farm, get your big item, and you just become a nuisance. Keeper does the same thing, but is even more annoying. Because Blinding Light is so good, Recall is so good for team fights. Mana Leak is probably the most rage-inducing spell if you're uh, unable to immediately remove it. And Blinding Light is impossible to push into. So the hero is just all around pretty good. Doesn't have a... Like reliable stun early on and doesn't have like good catch, so that's like the biggest problem with the hero. But very strong first phase pick. Yeah, the fact that if he's not playing against or or uh, if you don't have the right lineup to dive him under the tower, the fact that he can defend a tower by himself, maybe plus one hero to just back him up there, is just a very valuable asset you can have to a team. And why he's been so popular. Starting more so recently, but even before that, and from then he's received some nerfs here. I mean, a ten extra mana cost on his mana leak. Yeah. Uh, at at that point, people don't even go mana leak early anyway. So at that point, he probably has ags. So he doesn't really care too much. Right. From the side of Stony Brook, we see that Slardar picked up once again. Most likely going to be in that same role as he did last time, played by Dragonite on that four position. Uh, four position who does kind of rotate into a three if they have a three who rotates into like a jungler. Um, and most offlaners can do that, so I wouldn't be surprised to see the same thing come out. Jakiro is a new one. We don't see it that often, but it provides really, really nice push and really nice team fight if you have any sort of, you know, combination with it, like a chrono or just like a vacuum or anything of that sort. This hero can be very, very strong. Um, so I'm pretty excited to see this. It's a nice change of pace. And then BRB, Big Red Bear is going for the Axe. A little bit of annoying hero, pretty strong in lane, or, you know, you could just do a full-time jungle and get that, you know, 8 to 9 minute blink if you know what you're doing, maybe 10 if you get contested, but very, very quick jungler, so I'm, I'm a fan of that pickup too. Well, that gives them the uh, Axe Caudal lane as a potential as well, depending on what they're laning up against. That's a very strong dual lane off lane. So Stony and Brook here actually picking both their supports right away, uh, which isn't too common. I wonder what they have in mind here. Obvious things to go with the slaughter, of course, is the life sealer, but that's already taken out. Mm -hmm. And now they're going to take out Jug themselves. I like the man from Cornell. Alchemist, <laughs> we're not going to let you cheese us again. We understand that it's hard to, you know coordinate perfectly so playing against an alchemist who just thrives on the lack of coordination or the lack of you know ability to end a game is a big deal and they're like we're not gonna let you do that again but now if stony brook goes naga i'm just gonna laugh resident sleeper game it uh, feels like the exact same role as alchemist alchemist is a poor man's naga 
Naga. Oh, oh now I regret saying well it. With the coddle here. Now that I say it, I feel like it'll pop up. Yeah, <laughs> coddle Naga. Uh, too bad uh, PL isn't uh, better, otherwise we see some coddle PL, remember that? Yeah, PL did make some little bit of a resurgence like in the past month, but then once he got buffed, he stopped being picked for some reason. I don't really know how it all works, maybe the hero was never good to begin with. But the Ags build on uh, PL with a blind, or not blinding light, with chakra magic on keeper, so you can spam it, is insanely strong at defending a tower. Between keeper with a blind... Uh, Illuminate and the Ags on PL which bounces between units if you don't know what it does. And you have a talent buff at level 10 that gives you extra damage. It just does insane split push. But enough about that. Hero hasn't been picked yet, so I don't want to just harp on that all draft. The band's coming out from Stony Brook. It's going to be a uh, sniper, so they're afraid of maybe that really annoying siege or game. Because if you have a sniper and a keeper, I don't foresee Stony Brook being able to push at all. And then Big Red Barracks goes and bans the OD, who is a very annoying mid lane hero. Maybe they've done their research on uh, Dark Raider and they know that Alchemist and uh, OD are two of his heroes. So they banned those out. Uh, one curious thing is Ember hasn't been picked or banned in either of these games. and I mean, no He was banned in the first game. Was he? Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, he hasn't been banned yet, and I know it is a Dark Raider you know, specialty, so I would be... Uh, I might, I might want to say that they're going to pick it for him fourth pick before it can get banned out in the last phase. So they just get the Weaver here uh, once again. Yeah, it's a, a good hero. It combos well with Slardar because you have the minus armor. Also, it might not be a carry Weaver this time. You can see it in the offlane. You can see it as the four roll. And although I don't want to say it's a mid Jakiro yet, it could be a mid Jakiro as well because... Jakiro, you know, surprisingly good in that matchup, especially against all these melee heroes that are coming into the mid lane. And it has oh, nice tower yeah, versus levels. Jakiro versus TA, that it's is actually... insanely overpowered. <laughs> TA can't do anything. It's so sad. Because it slows her attack speed as yep. well. So she, not only is it her shield uh, I've seen... burned... She just can't attack. I've seen so many TAs miss their uh, meld strike because they expect the attack to come out immediately and then they click to walk after using it, but the attack slow messes up that first hit and then they just walk out of it. But, uh, I don't know. Most likely, I think they're just going to stick to what they did last game. This uh, carry savior on Weaver last game, although he started 0 and 2, he ended up 11, 2, and 12, which was insanely impressive. That you know you're able to come back on a hero that doesn't really have that comeback potential. Yeah, a couple of missteps during the laning stage, but I feel like after that, I mean, yeah. he had a, he didn't get caught out or anything like that. Yeah. So it could be a comfort pick for him, and they're just gonna send him on the safe lane again. Send Dragon Knight on the Slardar four slash three position again. And look at this, Ember is actually picked up by Cornell before Stony Brook could grab it. So that kind of throws that out of the window for Dark Raider. But one of Maybe other Esther one of or Dark Raider no, right? Ursa. Ursa? I know Dark Raider likes Ursa. Ursa does insanely well against Ember Spirit. They already have the tower push with Jakiro and I guess just like all these heroes in particular can just kinda of poke at towers, but uh Ursa would uh would not surprise me here. He kinda gets boned a bit by Axe and Coddle though, but Yeah, not not too bad. Yeah, if you, you get, get coddled by him light, you can ult. If Axe jumps on you and you have a quick reaction, you can ult before he does his call, and then you're just not going to take damage from it. Uh, the Rosh uh, advantage as well with yep. the Slaughter. Slaughter, Weaver, Ursa, Roche will die instantly. Okay. Oh, and they'll go with my pick, Shadow Fiend. Okay, rub it in more. So there's the <laughs> Shadow Fiend. It's a lot safer, of course. It's safer. It does well against Ember. Not quite as well as Ursa would do, but it still does well. And then something else is it just kind of amplifies this minus armor strategy. If they get any right clicks on this Ember or Keeper with a Slardar Amp, Weaver Bugs, Shadow Fiend, uh, Presence of the Dark Lord, I believe it's called, uh, these heroes are just going to blow up in like two hits because they don't have particularly high armor. And even Axe, if you don't have your call active, he's just going to die in a few clicks to any of these heroes. So they're going for the classic, you know, punishing pub strat of minus armor. And not not I don't call it a pub trap because it only works in pubs. I call it pub trap because it's pretty easy to execute. And this game, it looks like uh, they have an easy path in mind for how to win it. 
Ember and Slark, did they learn something from Rutgers when they scrimmed yesterday? <laughs> it's a Rutgers specialty right here. Yeah, the, the, the questioning. Oh, and X. I remember the game we were watching. It was Ember, Slark, and X, and all of yep. them rushed that blade mail. And it was Dude, the funniest thing to see because it worked so well. The three hero blade mail. And Rutgers is up next, by the way, guys. And Gorgon and Tafius will be casting that one. Oh, that it's should be a good game. UBC. That's a good game. Rutgers, UBC are some of the top teams in the entire like league, in my opinion. Like some of the top five, both of them in the top five. So that should be a really, really fun game to watch. But this game, they ban out the silencer. It's a pretty good hero for the uh, Cornell. Because like we were saying last game, if you blink on Centaur and then silence, it'll do the same thing. Uh, or we were theory crafting it. Same thing goes with Axe. If you blink Axe call and then global silence, there's no escape imaginable or no help imaginable from uh, imaginable from Stony Brook. So the last ban a bad end. Uh, uh, I'm not really I'm sure. I'm surprised what... to see that actually ban last. Because I guess it is. Uh, they do need in terms an of NA game. classic. That's like a yeah. It's a classic lane dominator. Classic. Yep. And against a Weaver, it's not like Weaver does a super well or good job against that. But if you get a poor man shield and have the the uh, aphotic shield up, Weaver just pokes at you, tickles you. I mean, he has pretty uh, small range as well, so he's prone to getting hit by that shield. And we saw that banned out last game, right? By Big yeah, Red Bears? It was first ban, I believe. Or was it Stony Brook who banned it out? I know one of them first banned it. Uh, I believe it was Stony Brook who banned it I because they it were on Stony the tire. Brook. Yeah, they first banned it. And now they for, uh, last pick it. So it goes from first ban first game to last pick second game. And I mean, it is a good off laner. Those Eidolons are very annoying as a melee safe laner to deal with, and you can just jungle insanely fast. And like we were saying earlier, if they just have a Jakiro hitting at tower, Shadowfiend hitting at tower, and an Enigma slash Weaver to back them up, that's an insanely tough fight to start for Cornell, jumping in on that. They have to jump on multiple targets at once. And it makes a silencer ban make a bit more sense there as well. So that's uh, kind of a counter to Enigma. But I think the biggest thing about the Enigma here is the fact that he's going to be able to slow the level progression coming out from the Slark by eating the range creeps with his uh, Eidolons, right. and Slark is a hero that really wants his level 6 as soon as possible, because even at that point, if his lane's not going well, he can just jungle. But if he can't get the levels from the lane, then he's just kind of in a bad situation overall. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and intro the teams on the side of Cornell, Dire Squad. We see Sasquatch TPing out to lane, planting a ward on the Spirit Breaker. Ember's playing the carry Slark. Rabbit... Oh yeah, you messed up. Rabbit is here. Rabbit is her axe. What? Up? Rabbit is her axe. On Keeper of the Light, we see Cakes on the mid Ember, and we have Solar on the off lane axe. And on the side of SBU, we got Dark Raider on the Shadow Fiend mid, Masquerade playing the Enigma off lane. We got Dragon Knight on the Slaughter. We confuse ourselves in that mm -hmm. other cast. I remember that Dragon Knight was in the game. <laughs> Yeah, only Hope playing the support Jakiro and Savior once again on the Weaver. Alright, so this game, I believe the laning phases are going to go pretty evenly. Uh, Dark Raider on the Shadow Fiend, you were saying, uh, is a pick against Embers. How does that mid lane go? Because that's the one I'm less certain about. Um, in terms of the Spirit Breaker being able to contribute to the lane, I say that if they can get a couple gank stuff, they definitely can slow down Dark Raider, but I mean, Ember is not a hero that can just dominate uh, Shadow Fiend. Um, he's going to get his farm as long as he plays it correctly. Okay. And then in the. And uh, if anything, Ember could actually end up having a pretty bad lane if the Shadow Fiend gets a good start. Maybe a kill on him um, gotcha. with the rotation, with the slaughter, or something like that. Just because of the ranged and the high damage going on the Shadow Fiend, Ember is a pretty low armor hero, even mm -hmm. with a poor man's. Right. Alright, and then in this other lane, as we were saying, the annoyance from Enigma sapping the XP, you're not going to really win the lane, but you're going to make it that Slark doesn't get as nice of a time as normal. And then in this bottom lane, Weaver looks like he's going to be against a literally nobody lane, as Axe just resorts right to the jungle. He already denied two creeps here in the first wave. <laughs> That's obnoxious. Oh, Slark is triggered right now. He's like, what? Where's my four creeps? Meanwhile, mid, we saw the classic 2v2 lane. Uh, Spearbreaker and Slardar are both just kind of poking at the other hero and being annoying. 
Looks like there is going to be a charge onto him once again. <laughs> There's no kill potential at level 1 for an Ember Spirit, uh, Spirit Breaker, but they're going to just try to stop him from getting the easy and early CS. And they as, kinda... a, as a Spirit Breaker, that wasn't the most efficient charge there, but I think it made him miss a last hit. Yeah, but after that, under the tower, he's now 5-3. and three. Dark Raider has the extra Necromastery, so this lane is now going to be quite a bit easier for him. Dragon is just following the Spirit Breaker right now. He's making sure he doesn't get mm -hmm. anything off. So I really like how uh, Stony Brook is starting out this game. They won mid, or not won mid, they secured mid for their Ember, or for their uh, Shadow Fiend. They're being an annoyance top. They're not trying to win it. They just know what they have to do to be annoying. And then bottom lane, they have a hero farming the lane. And then both of these supports were just sitting on the side and just being a nuisance to the jungler and uh, roaming spear breaker so they don't get free levels and XP. So I'm really liking how they're uh, starting out this game. Only hope even stole the boundary away from Sasquatch here. That's just the uh, strength of Jakiro, I and mean, he's a uh, deceptively tanky uh, int hero uh, for a ranged int hero. Mm -hmm. Kind of like a pseudo ogre. They both have two heads, both super tanky, both throw fire at people. Meanwhile, bottom lane, sorry, they're going to be charging in onto the Weaver, but the Shikuchi will come out early, and I'm pretty sure at this level, Shikuchi might be faster. It does. 650 speed, I believe, and then charge is only 600. So yeah, he's actually faster than the charge, so you can just get away from it at any point. No, oh, isn't uh, Weaver? It's just max move speed until he gets to level 25. Is 550. it? 550. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're right at maximum speed, so he can be caught by the Spirit Breaker, but even still, that the the 50 speed bonus uh, that Spirit Breaker has isn't enough to close the gap that quickly. All right. Spirit Breaker will have level 2 now, so it's it's, has a bash potential. It'll be pretty nice, but I don't think that's that's enough to make his hero super good now. He still doesn't have any mana after using those 2 charges or 3 charges, and now he's going to try to trade hits, but there's not too much that will come of it. Well, I don't like how the Jakiro actually leveled the Liquid Fire level 1 here. It's kind of an obvious go-to, it's, it's just free and you can spam it, but the Dual Breath is so much more powerful at level 1, both the cooldown and what it does. Yeah, Liquid Fire is actually really bad at level 1. They actually, uh, going on only hope here, he went a little bit deep to get the hit on the Solar, and the extra bash will come out, the slows from both uh, Orb of Venom and Battle Hunger, but it's not going to be enough, and now with the, the 3v2 advantage, they're going to turn around the kill, get First Blood onto Spear Breaker, therefore they support Dragon Knight, or support Slardar played by Dragon Knight. <laughs> yeah, they missed the uh, dual breath there, but it didn't matter at the end of the day. Yeah. So there is going to be another charge going right towards mid. Dark Raider is going to try to get that uh, regen rune, and he will get it, but he might actually die for this. Cakes is closing the distance here, but only Hope had turned around and caught up with them. And now Sasquatch might be a little bit deep once again. He will turn and try to charge. He gets the bash. Might get a kill. Oh, the bash comes out! That was a long range hit, and they get the bash, and that's a double kill for Sasquatch. And now Dragonite actually just has to run away. He doesn't have a poor man shield, so this tankiness from Spirit Breaker just from his natural stat gain and stat start. That's kind of absurd, but that went really well for him. Meanwhile, in the top lane, they're diving deep for Masquerade. They actually go behind the tower. Embers does get a kill here, but he's sitting at 30 health, and he's going to go down to the support rotation. Uh, yeah, the Shadow Fiend couldn't uh, use his region there because he was affected by Ober Venom. And now bottom, they're going on Savior. They do get the call on him, so he doesn't get away quick enough. And after the two bashes in charge, they're going to get another kill here. Cornell is taking a very nice turn after the they lost that first blood. Four kills just in a row across the map, top, middle, bottom. The max, the bash build. I, it's, it's working, I guess. He's getting the bashes. Uh, they're going to be looking for a kill on the Cakes mid. They do... Oh, he dodges the stun with his uh, sleight of fist. They get a return kill on the uh, Dark Raider, and Dragonite's just going to have to slither out of there. But that was a really good play out of Cakes. He timed it perfectly to, you know, normally you don't even see Sleight of Fist leveled, but he used it to dodge and stay alive. Alright, well, this game is going a little bit better than it did last game. I wonder if uh, Cornell will be able to uh, take advantage of this good early start. 
Uh, but once again, I gotta mention that that is actually SVU's weakness, is their laning stage. It's gonna be what uh, Cornell can do after this mm -hmm. that will really matter. Solar Bottom getting a little bit aggressive, walks up to the creep wave, uses, uh, tries to use a spin, I don't know if he actually used it, but he had no mana to get away, and these supports rotated in and get another kill onto him. As uh, you can remember, in that game against Denver, they were super far behind, but if that team fighting with their Tinker, we gave them MVP of the game uh, for that reason alone. Mm -hmm. Looks like they're going to be looking for a kill on the Masquerade. He hasn't quite hit level 6 yet, and with the charge and uh, Keeper Illuminate, it looks like they will get the kill. And once again, that last hit bash, he has a haste rune, so it does even more damage than it normally would, because it's based on move speed, I believe. Spirit Breaker, yep. yeah. Takes, and right now it's 30% of his move speed He is 4-1-1. One, one. This is a dream game for Spirit Breaker. Only 6 minutes in. He's almost level 5. And considering he hasn't stayed in the lane more than a few seconds, that's real nice. I wonder if he's going to just go all out in this bash build. He's going tread, so I'm going to assume he's going to do yeah, that. He's transitioning into like a right-click core. And it's really effective here. We were saying that they don't have the best stun lockdown because they don't have those blink initiators. Uh, I guess last game they only had the one uh, from from Magnus, but... Or, wait, sorry, I'm mixing up the teams because the side switched. They don't have the best uh, stunners, but they are the other team, so they weren't like last game. Anywho, they only have the keeper lumen or keeper mana leak, which isn't too reliable, and the blink stun uh, blink call, which has a little bit of a delay on it. So having him max out bash and you know just try to build this fast right click build could be very nice for him. Cornell looking for another kill bottom, charging under the tower and trying to get a call onto the Weaver, but they just narrowly miss. Nothing really lost from him, though. Oh, Ember trying to kill here onto Dark Raider. But he, I think his remnants didn't manage to hit, I so think, Dark Raider's just gonna TP out. I think they did do the damage, but it was only two remnants, so it's only a couple hundred damage. And he was a full health uh, Shadow Fiend there. Oh yeah, it did. Forgot it's only level six Ember. <laughs> Used to seeing that uh, old patch, fifteen percent spell amp, level ten Ember, yeah, triple it's a, remnant. It's a little bit absurd, but he's only level six right now. He doesn't have that free bonus, you know, hundred damage burst. And he is going blade mail. <laughs> <laughs> did they ring it. up uh did they ring up Rutgers for this game? Yeah, bottom lane, they are gonna look for a kill on the Sasquatch. The call will be there from Solar to try to save him, but he will tick down to the dual bre or the uh liquid fire at the very last second. So another kill going the way of Stony Brook in this bottom lane. Uh I think that's like the only saving grace right now for Stony Brook. Their lane phase should have been very strong, but just like this spear breaker has been making things happen everywhere. And uh Stony Brook is actually ahead right now. And Enigma didn't slow down this Slark at all, though. Well, actually, I, I'm wrong. Stony Brook, I said they were ahead, but if you look at the net worth and XP, yeah, yeah, they're Cornell's actually down. Ahead. Yeah, Cornell is ahead by 1,500 net worth and 500 XP, despite being down by kills. So it's a little bit deceptive, but it is what it is. Bottom lane looks like Cornell's going for another kill. They will get another taunt off on to only hope here. They do have a dunk ready, so he will go down. Dragonite tried to save him with a crush there and tried to go back in for a second one, but it was not in time. And now look, they might actually go for more. So uh, Cakes on this Ember Spirit is actually rotating into the bottom jungle. He's going to take this bounty rune in a second and might just go towards the lane. If they get a charge into call into remnant bomb, they could kill him. And with this haste rune, I'd imagine they want to be aggressive. So when do you think that uh, Stony Brook's timing is for when they're ready to transition into the mid game and start team fighting? Because Shadow Fiend, unlike an alchemist, doesn't really have a natural timing like the alchemist does with the armlet radiance, where he's just kind of ready to fight now, or he can just farm his next item after that. I mean, he has that choice. But with the Shadow Fiend, I mean, he's going treads. Yeah, uh, it depends on what his item is. I've seen people go like for a quick Shadow Blade right here, brown boots and a Shadow Blade, and then just try to be super aggressive with your ultimate. But I've also seen people do what he's doing, where you go treads, and then you could go for a Dragon Lance into like a uh, Hurricane Pike or a Dragon Lance into a BKB, and just try to go for that like mid-late game, 20-25 minute fighting timing. 
Uh, fight's gonna break out in the bot lane, yeah. but it doesn't look like either side will end up going down. Yeah, they do bait a TP from Dark Raider bottom, so there are four heroes now in the bottom lane on the side of Stony Brook. And it's a little bit of a waste of time, but it is necessary to save their team and just kind of dissuade uh, Cornell from getting too much out of that and fighting and getting kills. Spirit Breaker tried to go for the curry there. He saw it when he was charging through, but <laughs> you can only get one attack on. Yeah. And Enigma's gonna go a Midas, so I think they're gonna slow the game down. Maybe go for a push is the mm -hmm. thing. Uh, at th some point, they can try for it. Uh, going against a Kato is hard, but in terms of the overall team fight for Cornell, it's not gonna be the greatest until the Slark gets a Shadow Blade. Yeah. I think uh, Stony Brook is okay slowing down this game. They don't necessarily scale better, uh, but they do scale well. And having a Shadow Fiend who isn't like going for a super greedy build or nor a super aggressive build kind of tells you that. Because this hero can farm very fast without needing to build a Midas. The hero can farm fast with, er, and fight well without needing to build right into a fighting item. And even when the Slark does get a Shadow Blade, that's not going to help him fight if there are sentries on the ground, of course, because they have no answer to the Black Hole. I guess they're only cancelled to it if he if like... they Mana Leak... Blinding light. Leak, blinding light. The, it does blinding. cost a lot of mana to use the black hole, and if you use any of the abilities beforehand and uh, end up going into a black hole with only like 200 mana left, it could be enough. In, in theory, Ember could cancel its searing chains, but I don't actually Spirit think I've too. ever seen Spirit Breaker a black ult. hole canceled by yeah, Super Breaker ult as well. Meanwhile, in this mid lane, sorry, I almost missed it. They are going to be diving here on the side of Cornell, and the turnaround is there. Four heroes on the side of Stony Brook, and it's going to be a two for zero here. A kill onto the roaming Spirit Breaker, who has been doing so much in the early game, and the Ember Spirit. Uh, if you look at Ember's farm, he's pretty significantly be far, uh, behind the Shadow Fiend. Yeah. If you look at the net worth, it's over, th uh, yeah, over a thousand gold already. And it's not like he's going an item that's going to help him farm at all. He's going for this uh, fighting, greedy build of the blade mail rush. And uh, Slark, I'm sure he's a strong hero, but I don't see him being able to just carry this game by himself. Looks like Tower will go down to only hope, but in the back line, Stark Raider will die to the Spirit Breaker charge and rotation from uh, four Cornell players, or three other Cornell players. And they might just get a tier one mid trade off of that. So if they get this tower, that's hugely in favor of Stony Brook because, you know, after you lose two uh, heroes and a tower, the fact that you can get a return kill and tower immediately is just uh, pretty throwy. And it's going to be a Shadow Blade complete for Embers. But this is a pretty slow push, so it might not work. I uh, know it's gonna happen. The There's no rotation all time. Yeah, of all as well. Meanwhile, Masquerade with this Midas is level 11. I believe he's the highest uh, level in the game right now, tied with Slark. But uh, he he's doing nicely for himself. Wait, did he change Enigma's talents? I could have uh, sworn he had a plus experience talent. I am not sure. However, that level 15 talent plus 120 GPM is very nice. Solar actually using a blink dagger uses the reveal to kill uh, this uh, enigma that we were talking about top lane. No, I was thinking wrong. He has the cooldown reduction. That's what I was thinking about. Yeah, which is a really nice talent on him because the biggest downside of your hero is a 200 second cooldown ultimate. All right. So, Cornell, they're doing a lot better this game than they were last game at this stage. They are ahead by quite a bit on this Lark. He's sitting at 6,500 net worth, has a Shadow Blade picked up, and now they're looking for a kill. Uh, he is going pretty deep here. I don't know if he got scouted out by the tower. Jakiro, oh, he's under a shrine. Sentry is going to be dropped. Slark immediately. Bates two TPs, Bates a sentry and gets out. That's a valley. That's like an economic victory right there. <laughs> I like it. Ember is just trying to farm his item, but yeah, I mean still Ember here. Being able to finish his blade mail. Ember here with a blink axe. If they manage to catch this Weaver, they do have the damage to blow him up. So if Weaver shows at all, like he is right now, Solar might want to go for a blink call here. Does not quite know where he is. They don't have a ward in the lane, so they don't see him, and he's just gonna let it be, uh, let it be that and get out. Weaver does see the creeps being hit. Yeah, I don't know if he knew it was Axe, but he knows someone there, and he's just going to play extra cautious now. Goes back to the tower. I don't know. Both of these teams are kind of just biding their time. Slark did get his Shadow Blade. He went for that one little play, and now he's just back to the jungle. The hero does farm fairly well with Dark Pact, but 
not quite what I would expect when you get this uh, early Shadow Blade. Well, they just want the blink on the slaughter now on the side of SBU, so they're gonna play the game pretty slow as well. And so that comes out, and Enigma is He's going just for farming with his Midas. Yeah, he yeah, wants the mech. Him. He didn't rush it, so it's gonna be a lot slower than uh, normal. But a uh, twenty-minute mech is still effective. Bottom lane, they do get the blink call onto the Weaver. They do not manage to blow him up before he gets the alt off, so he ults right back to full health, and now the rotation is coming out from Only Hope, as well as Sasquatch charging in. They do get the stun, but they have to turn tail and run once again. Uh, Ax might have been able to get the chop off there, but he wanted to wait to make sure, but then that mm -hmm. resulted in him going too late. And now with the bug on him, he has no escape. He can't blink out because of the constant little tick damage, and it will be a return kill for Stony Brook. And now they're pinging out the tower. Yes, there are heroes here on the side of Cornell, but they used all of the remnants there for that kill, and they did not get it, so I imagine they don't defend it beyond this fortify. No, oh, but they do teleport in the uh, keeper as well. He is going for the classic Ags Rush build, he's about halfway there, which uh, isn't particularly fast, nor is it particularly slow, so we'll just have to see how that one progresses. It looks like with that, SBU will back themselves away, Slark once again going in and immediately disengaging. He, he's playing the baiting game, he's not getting kills off these uh, you know, little pokes, but he's definitely being uh, a threat, he's making them scared. Well, Enigma gonna TP, but Axe couldn't get the call and, to cancel. Yeah, a little bit slow on the reaction time, did not quite uh, connect it, and... I don't know, this is this just seems like a very passive, very scared game from both teams. Everybody's just grouping up as four in this like bot lane or mid lane for the past few minutes, and uh, leaving one or two heroes top to just farm away. I would say this is gonna favor SVU, because overall, we were talking about last game, how their execution had to be kind of on point to make sure the Alchemist gets his farm in this game. I would say it's the opposite, where they have pretty easy team fighting. Uh, the Slaughter goes in and gets his amp on anyone, and Shadow Fiend takes him down in a couple of hits, or the Weaver. Mm -hmm. Also, if you look at the net worth, uh, Cornell had the really nice start, but it's slowly going back in uh, favor of Stony Brook, so the fact that it's not being punished at all, having that nice early lead on the on the Slark, having that really early Shadow Blade and the early Blink is pretty nice for him. They well, do get the Deny. Last pick on the Enigma as well, I mean, Enigma, he hasn't used Black Hole yet this game, but when he does, he doesn't have to really worry about too much things canceling it. Yeah, I don't know if he's even left this top lane in jungle at all. He just has a Midas, he almost has his uh, uh, mechanism up. He's level 13, I believe he is still the highest level in the game. No, no, Slark is still ahead of him. So there are a couple other 13s as well, but he is keeping up nicely with these cores, so... I think they're content with how things are going, as long as they don't hemorrhage kills. Yeah, um, Cornell is just afraid of overextending a bit here, but because they don't have a pushing lineup, uh, they're not really doing much at this point. They're kind of just farming, but they're definitely going to get out-farmed if things continue the way they are. Yeah, that's something that I didn't really mention in the draft, but I uh, mentioned briefly when they're pushing tier 1 mid. They just don't take buildings, unless Lark has like 30 essence shift after a fight. Also, in this top lane, Masquerade did go for a solo kill onto the Ember Spirit, used his first black hole of the game, and I don't think he had the damage in Ember, just had a remnant ready to get him out of there. Black hole down? Yeah, black he hole down. Cornell, Cornell has a Echo Saber up, they have a Blade Mail and almost bots up on Ember. It looks like they might want to just go and fight. That black hole timing being down for another two and a half minutes is possibly one of the best opportunities for Cornell to uh, get a nice advantage back. Embers is waiting here for some sort of teammate to show up and help him get the kill. He, it's not going to come, but that extra sprint bonus damage there might have been enough to get Slark that last hit and kill, and then he's just going to TP out before any reaction comes from Stony Brook. So that's, I think, also first Slark kill uh, with the Shadow Blade. He's been doing a lot of poking and a lot of annoyance with it, but his farm has fallen off with all of his roaming, and now uh, Dark Raider's almost caught up. Ember with a blade mail now hasn't done much of anything with it either. Mm -hmm. Oh, it just seems like a very, very hesitant game from both teams. They know elimination is on the line. If Cornell loses this game because they get a little bit aggressive at this point, they're never gonna f or they're gonna like be beating themselves up over it. So they're they're playing a little bit cautious and understandably so. 
Well, they they have an invis axe right here. here. Yep. Invis axe scouts out where that uh, Shikuchi ends, and they just blow him up within a second. The the TP rotation was there, but he had to cancel it, knowing that if he had finished it, he would have died as well. In this mid lane, they get a four staff on the uh, or four staff in on Dragon Knight from Dark Raider. That was a really nice play. Dragon Knight wasn't able to close the gap by himself, but with the four staff stun, uh, Dark Raider managed to secure it. I believe Dark Raider got the kill too. Yeah. And now Dark Raider with that kill is now top net worth for the first time this game. I think the thing about SBU's lineup is if they get like a couple of pick up here or there or even just catch Cornell out of position, like Rosh is just theirs. Well, you can't say the same for Cornell because of their low physical damage until yeah. Slark gets a ton of essence shifts or even more farm. Yeah, Solar goes for a solo kill top, but isn't quite able to finish it. Enigma TP's out with like just over that 250 threshold. Um, so this Keeper getting an Axe, is that actually such a big deal? Because yes, it'll give a nice daytime push advantage. Like we were saying, they don't really push towers well, but if they have a constant 500 AoE heal, that's really helpful for pushing, and it helps them, you know, prevent a push. Is it that big a deal? Um, it depends how they play it. Having that heal on an axe can be game changing. If he gets like a call, and then the heal comes over as well, burst everyone down, and then he just starts chopping people, and then you snowball through with the extra move speed from the uh, culling blade, definitely can change the fight. But it's not like a uh, something that's that easy to execute. And depending on the, not only his familiarity of playing with the Kado, but the whole teams, it kind of takes like a some type of coordination to make sure you get full value out of that. Like, call deal. in front of this wave, I'm sending one out, get ready. Yeah. Deal. Alright, so, top lane, they did get a free kill onto the axe under the tower, and then they took that tier 1, so a nice little uh, play from the side of Stony Brook, gets that last tier 1 out of uh, Cornell's favor. And now I think the towers are even, 3-3, three to three, yes. So the towers are back to even, net worth is purely off of farm and kills, and we see Cornell is still 3,000 ahead and 2,000 ahead respectively in XP and, or net worth and XP. Now Enigma has a blink complete. I don't know. The, the longer this game goes, the more this SF is going to pull ahead and ahead and ahead despite not having that Midas. And I think he's just going to be a menace around 20 minutes from now if the game gets to that point. Cornell, they should uh, be looking sometime in the near future to really push off of this advantage they have. Mid lane, oh wow. That is a big blow up. He, he sent a remnant back and walked into the lane to farm, but the blink stun from both Enigma and from Slardar just blew him up within a second. And now, the Roche uh, potential that we were saying earlier on with all this minus armor. Yeah, I mentioned this before where they could get one pick off and that's Rosh. Yeah. And nothing that uh, Dyer can do about this unless they buy back. Roche has negative armor right now. 15 minus 18, 15 minus 19, and just climbing up and up. They might you know, there's a fight. Right a three-man well. black hole that cancels the blink call from Axe because he blinks right into it. And that's going to be a huge blow up. Four down. It will be a buyback from Ember. He wanted to come back into this fight, but now that the buyback's already used, he's regretting it deeply because they can't fight this anymore. And they're just going to go right back into Roche Pit. They know with three dead and the buyback already committed, it's going to be uh, way too spooky for... Oh, he's tried yeah. to go for the steal. But... That is a really nice play. Even though that was the second remnant he had down, as long as you click on the remnant that you want to end up on, you can end up at an earlier remnant. So what he did was he threw the second remnant into the pit and then ulted to the remnant that was safe, using that little bit of downtime to try to steal it, but it wasn't quite there. It was actually pretty close there. He might yeah. have even if he had got pulled the last that off, hit on the Roshan. If he had pulled that off, I would give him play of the game off of that alone, because that's a pretty high skill, like, rare play to see. Those are the type of plays where you see, like, pro players try it a few times and still mess up frequently. So You have to yeah. buy back there. Yeah, and that's he, set him pretty far behind now. And he didn't expect his team to die so quickly, but the black hole came out perfectly on two, and then Axe blinked in just a little bit unlucky on his timing because he landed right in the center of it right when it started. And yeah, pretty much it was perfect timing there yeah. for SBU. They got a nice pick off on Denver, head straight into Rosh, Enigma had a blink for that fight, and, mm -hmm. and this is just classic SBU Dota. It's 
Uh, they pretty much got the space they needed to get their core items up. And Weaver getting a little aggressive at the shrine. He does go under the shrine, try to kill on Axe, but they have, or er, try to get a kill on Spirit Breaker. But Axe blinks in, they have a Illuminate ready, and they call, uh, call and shop him down. Um, Shadow Fiend is on the cliff here. Yeah, he's a little bit of scouting, trying to probably use Hurricane Pike to save a little bit of time and ends up cliffing himself with it, but... Not the end of the world. He's still top of the net worth by quite a bit. Now Enigma's actually second place net worth from that black hole fight and having this Midas all this time. It is on cooldown right now, or off cooldown, which I don't really like, but uh, he is, he's is he been doing a lot this game despite how much farm he's just been kind of AFK doing. And it is his Greaves now. He did go for the gold per minute instead of the cooldown reduction. Yeah, I would explain why he's so high up on net worth. <laughs> He's had that for a few minutes now, it's a free like 500, 1000 gold that he has. Let's get on to get to his BKB faster and mm -hmm. I feel like this could be just a one and done game so he doesn't really need to have that lower cooldown on Black Hole. Right. If How many seconds is 15% actually? Uh, From his level 2 alt it would be, or level 3 alt it would be 20 seconds? 20, 22 seconds? Yeah. 24, yeah, sorry. 24. Oh, 24. Yeah, okay, 24. 24. So it'd be, that's, that's nice. Like, 24 seconds is pretty big. If there is 24 second nerf or buff to that black hole, everyone would be like, wow, that's overpowered. But the fact that you have 120 gold per minute and you can get that BKB or you can get one of these items that are just insanely strong, that's actually equal in value. So, a little pause coming up. They need a break after playing for a few hours. Things happen. It's uh, no big deal. So, the state of the game. Stony Brook is slowly pulling ahead with this. They were behind. Once again, this is like exactly what happened last game. Cornell was uh, ahead the whole time, and then one nice fight or one nice play from the side of Stony Brook, and they just pull it back into their favor. And now they are 1,000 uh, gold ahead and 2,000 XP ahead. Uh, the bright side for Cornell is they have everything they need to fight. It's just finding that fight, especially against the Aegis right now. They can't really do that. So they're just going to farm for another uh, I guess three minutes or so until this Aegis expires. But then this Enigma is actually a major problem. We saw him get that black hole in there, and they have no way to counter it. Mm -hmm. And well, oh, they do have a way. It's just tough to do. Yeah, it's tough. Uh, like Spear Breaker no, was caught in it. They don't but... have no way, but they have... They don't have the best way yeah. to deal with the Enigma this game. And that last pick definitely gonna hurt them here. Because, like, their heroes just kind of want to go in there and commit. Especially mm -hmm. the Axe, the Slark, as well as the Ember. They kind of play in that same pocket where they're just straight in the front lines on your face. And Enigma can easily just land a three-man, four-man black hole even on their team because Spirit is going to be up in there as well. And it feels like the Spirit Breaker only has to play differently, just maybe play back a bit more just to make sure he can get that Nether Strike to cancel the Enigma ultimate. So, look at Slark's items. Are you, uh, I'm curious why he's skipping this Silver Edge here, because yes, the recipe did go up, but you're spending 500 gold to effectively get that 5 extra stats, which is insanely, like, high value, but you're also getting a shorter cooldown and a better, like, bonus on the item. So I, I just think it's a natural build up. Also, lowering the damage output of any hero that you break it on is very strong. Uh, yeah, I'm not so sure why he's yeah. even going Scotty this game because the extra HP doesn't even help him that much if he gets caught in like the Midnight Pulse or Black Hole or whatever like that. But even then, like more HP doesn't help you against minus armor either. Like yeah. something like a Butterfly would have been better here if he was gonna skip the Silver Edge. The thing is, I'm okay with the Scotty. I just uh, think that he needs to go for an item. Yeah, and there he goes back and gets the Silver Edge recipe. Okay, I can I can stop blaming him now. <laughs> Embers, if you come back to watch this game, I love you, buddy. Anywho, he, uh, I wonder now if he goes for the so, uh, the butterfly, we can both say we were right. Anywho, in this mid lane, they are smoking up, they're baiting out Dark Raider here, they have four heroes smoked behind them, and they understand the state of the game, they understand that they are pretty strong, and these creeps did get close enough to the tower to cancel the uh, back door, so they might go for it here. The blink stun misses on Dragon Knight. Yeah, I think that'll just be that. Pushing, like you were saying, pushing into a keeper with this illuminate, he can just solo defend a tower against five heroes. And all the while, Cornell's just farming up. 
farming out all the lanes, farming out the jungle. Ember is still very far behind, uh, but he's actually surpassed the Weaver now. Uh, we didn't mention that, but the Weaver actually is not very far from himself either. It's 29 minutes, and he only has a Dragon Lance and an Ultimate Orb. Yeah, the hero doesn't really have that farm potential. And right now, if they're just grouping up mid trying to get this tower, while all the cores and all the heroes of Cornell are just farming and split pushing, they're going to get a tier 2 bottom for trade. And that's insanely good for Cornell here, because they, they wasted all the time on uh, Stony Brook just to secure that. Oh no, Cakes walks in and tries to get a TP out, Dragon Knight just misses it. Dragon Knight had TP'd behind the trees so they didn't really see each other there. And now Savior is going to be the target of this next fight. Dark Raider actually might just go down immediately to this Ember. No! So, that was close. I'm literally one hit away. I guess he does have Aegis and it just expired. That could have been very bad timing if he had, uh, like, you know, tried to suicide do a creep or something right away to heal back up. But Aegis expires, he heals up. Embers, not Ember, but Embers playing the Slark almost had the kill there and had to get out at the very last second so he didn't die along with his uh, Spear Breaker. Wait, what happened to his Silver Edge? Uh, it's on the courier <laughs> still, right? No, did, no. Did he no? sell it? Yeah. Yeah, I think he maybe immediately. He's going back to Scotty. Ah, uh, now I kind of want you to watch this stream uh, afterwards and. Uh, Hear my flame. <laughs> the top lane, there's going to be a call from Solar. It doesn't look like he got any heroes with it. And now he's actually going to be chased down. A blink stun from Enigma right into the Midnight Pulse. And he's just going to be uh, dying quickly. Embers goes in and tries to get something. Now Sasquatch is committing with this charge. He has his ult up in a second. That extra bash comes out. And Dark Raider might go down here. Oh no, the black hole though. And he got pushed out. But it doesn't cancel it because he didn't run out of mana. So he didn't get stunned up. The stun comes out from Slark, the ultimate comes out from Requiem, or the Requiem comes out from the left side. Three going down, and now Embers is trying to get away. He has invis. The ice path hits him, but they don't have any detection, and that will be that. Yeah, they used it all down here. That that's, was... That's always unfortunate. It, it happens again and again. Stony Brook, they're a little bit behind. These fights look really bad. They're really low on all their heroes, but then they just turn around. They get the ults that they need to. They're all in the right spot, and they get a three for zero trade. Meanwhile, Cakes is trying to push bottom, but he can't commit to this. He's taking so much damage from these stun and midnight pulse. He gets a little bit of tier 3 harass, but that'll be that. And meanwhile, they lose tier 2 top. So he, he's okay. I don't actually see how Cornell team fights into SBU at this point when the black hole is up. They I mean, need the best offs. opportunity is actually right now when the black hole is down. Yep. They need to try to look for something and create a play. What they need is they need a really nice and uh, oh the blink call the blind call onto Weaver they catch him out but they don't actually have any damage for him he's gonna re uh, lapse out on the other side of the fight Embers is going for the uh, back lines he gets a little bit onto Only Hope but he has a Yules to stall himself out the charge will come through from Sasquatch and that will be that meanwhile on the right side of this fight they was still dragging on they managed to get a call again onto the Weaver and uh, dunk him down that time and Slardar is also there to go down. Back to this top shrine area, they get another- oh, they almost get the bash from the Spirit Breaker. They do get a, a forced TP from him to go back to base, and now it looks like only hope it will be down. Okay, so it's a good good return fight, like you are saying, Black Hole is down, so it's their best opportunity. And now they have 20 stacks of Essence Shift on Slark. They have stats from the Scotty that is a couple hundred gold from being finished. This could be their best chance to push a tower. Uh, Roshan will be spawning in exactly one minute, so somewhat of an early spawn, but I think uh, taking a tier 2 here would be nice. Get some of that control back, some of that gold swing back. Yeah, I like to see them keep going here. Ember is going Ember's very going deep right. by himself, tries to 1v1 uh, Dark Raider, but Masquerade pops out of the base at the same time and he has to be a little bit cautious there. I don't know if they know the exact timer of Black Hole, but it's going to be up in 20 seconds. And if this hero had gone that minus 15 second cooldown reduction talent, he could have had it up there and turned that around. So, good play out of Embers, just being a nuisance, but knowing his limits. I like to see his team go with him there. I feel like... Yeah, they they, uh, they should have... They, they should have just kept going. His at Black least Hole force a buyback. It's still on cooldown for another 30 seconds. The buybacks were all down, but when you see three heroes dead and the Black Hole was used in the last fight, you should try to get something off of that. Instead... They just kind of went back to deal with their lanes and farm the jungle. And, I mean, they're going to get some farm 
starting here, but Black Hole is going to come online once again, and there's going to be a gem as well onto the Enigma. Mm -hmm. Stony Brook grouped up immediately. They didn't know if Roche was up or not yet. They would get a ward down, they get some control back over that area with the gem, but they didn't quite see Roche spawn. It spawned right after they left. Now Slark is actually going deep once again. This could be really bad for him. He's in uh, 1v4 terrain against a shrine, and now Black Hole is up. They could commit it here. The blink call comes oh, out. nice call. Team. And if Masquerade could stay alive, it would be a big deal, but he cannot. And now uh, Masquerade and Dark Raider are going to go down. They do get the Slark in return. Dragon Knight's ticking down, but it looks like he might survive. Gem's being pinged down, tries to get up there. Slardar does go down in the back line. Meanwhile, uh, Spirit Breaker on the right side will go down. Savior's trying to fight with all he's got, but it is a 1v3 right now. And I think they got the gem, so they could the see call. him. And they do get him, so that is a 2 for 5. A big win for Cornell. And considering that fight was at the Stony, Book, Stony Brook Shrine, that's a big deal. Like, that's a big win for them. That's exactly what they need to get back into this game. That was a 2,500 gold swing, but a 6,000 XP swing in their favor. And if you look at the difference in XP graph, that just speaks... That speaks one... Both graphs, actually. It just speaks wonders. Yeah, that's just coddled daytime right there. They had the ward there, and... Stony Brook didn't, and it allowed Axe to set up that nice call, and they're gonna kill Enigma here once again. Oh, getting a little bit aggressive there. He didn't have the BKB, nor would he have really wanted to use it. And he just gets uh, blown up really quickly again. He has not had another black hole opportunity since that uh, big one. Uh, I guess that's just the, the downside of the hero, it's just a long cooldown base. Mm, there's only 30 seconds left on daytime, and I don't think they can get Rosh here. <laughs> Especially with that coming out, that just is the ultimate dissuading factor. They oh, do get nice a blink call on to two. Shadow Dark Raider is sitting at half health. He does have a BKB. He'll turn around BKB and blow up the uh, Spirit Breaker, but Jakira is going to go down to a wave at the same time. Blink stun from Dragon Knight. They catch out Axe. He will have a call to kind of counteract all that minus armor. Um, but I wonder if it's enough. Both teams are might be just content getting out of here. They know Slark just spawned. And he's on the hunt in mid lane. Well, I think SBU actually gets Roshan here. They have Black Hole available. And yeah. no more daytime on to Coddle. Slark is going to be the target here. If they black hole for him, it is definitely worth it. They're trying to be a little bit greedy, and they don't want to use it. And Embers might get away here, and he will actually just be able to heal up and invis out. Uh, the Axe jumps in and calls, I believe, on the Slardar, and a wave following up from Illuminate, or the Illuminate from Keeper gets the kill. Uh, I think he should have just used it. Not hesitate. Get the kill onto the Slark, which is a big hero, and then you can take that 5v4 advantage and take Roshan. And now they're just pinging back out for the Roshan. They don't really have the best right click damage. Slark only has 4 essence shift from that fight, but uh, I don't think they. or I think they expect Stony Brook not to defend it. Especially with uh, this Embers being. or er, is it Embers? No, it's Cakes being very annoying and just poking and scouting out this uh, response from SVU. The bugs come out, they do land on the axe, so now they've scouted out this Roshan attempt again. Roche is sitting really low this time at 3,000 health out of the 10,000. And now, once again, it's going to be a 10-man brawl at this pit area. Spearbreaker is probably going to come in, in within a few seconds, and uh, this, this fight could determine a lot. If they get Aegis and manage to push, either team could get a Rax and an Aegis here, considering how low this Roshan is. And I think SBU can't just walk in there, but they want to get a gank first. Well, Cornell is coming out ahead right now. Oh, the, the fight is happening. Sp uh, Spirit Breaker is still bottom, not quite ready. The initiation will come out. They're trying to kill Keeper of the Light at the very start of this fight. He will get the blind off. There is a black hole now. It's on to two, but he's dying to the blade mail. He didn't get the BKB off beforehand, so he just blows himself up there. And now, now he's a Dark two for Raider two. is going down. Three for two. A buyback from Keeper right back in. And that's a, that's a solid Cornell fight, I believe. Because they get the black hole used, and they still win the fight. They only lost two heroes, and a buyback on the Keeper isn't that big a deal. And with Roche being so low, they're going to get a Roshan and probably a Tier 2 here. Tier 2 top almost went down to the creeps in that fight, so... Cornell... Is, these Blade Mail is actually owning Enigma at this point. Yeah. 
the damage is pure, so I believe uh, your BKB won't even stop that. So even if Enigma BKB'd there, I believe the damage would go through it and uh, damage him. Oh, the they're gonna go in on him. Onto Masquerade. He does use the uh, black or er, the BKB here, but he does not have Black Hole to turn this fight around. Embers does have Aegis, but he is uh, being chased thoroughly by this Dragon Knight. And the right clicks will come out from the Weaver. That Amplify doing work on him. He is uh, down for his first life, but Cakes comes back in, Remnants in, kills the Slardar, and now this fight is just like a scrappy back and forth. One team chases, then the other team chases, and it just goes back and forth forever. But Dark Raider's back. Tower is still up, so they didn't manage to finish it. I don't know. This this game, despite how like decisive some of these fights are, there has been very little like follow through with uh, the objectives afterwards. Yeah, I think I don't know what SPU actually wanted to do with that first Aegis, but uh, SPU. I guess they yeah, SPU. I mean. Yeah. Oh, with uh, the first one, the first, yeah, yeah, yeah. the first. They kind of just let it sit by and... Mm -hmm. It expired I mean, I feel like after five minutes of only getting, I believe, a tier one and a tier two at best, or at most. The thing is, the Coddle really gave them a problem there, right? Mm -hmm. They couldn't really go high ground, that's the thing. So either way, this game was going to go late, and who does that actually favor here? Uh, I think in the near future late game it favors Stony Brook, but in the ultra late game it'll favor uh, Cornell. Because once this uh, Dark Raider he uh, guy, he's 5 slotted right now, once he hits the 6, 7 slot he'll be at like his ultimate peak. But after that he's gonna start falling off a little bit and Slark with the Essence Shift can kinda scale indefinitely and Ember can also scale much much better than he is right now. <laughs> Good thing Enigma has a low respawn timer. Uh, only minus 40. Nothing, no big deal. I mean, he, w it would, he would be dead for another 70. Oh god, he'd be dead for 70, 80 seconds that fight, and then he'd, they'd just uh, get Roche, or get Rax there almost guaranteed. Anywho, the blink call comes out from Axe. They do get a blink onto Dark Raider, or the call onto Dark Raider. He is ticking low, but it might not be enough, and with the Axe, oh, he actually heals right axle. up to full. What a turnaround. Dragon Knight will go for a little bit more. He gets the blink stun onto two, but Sasquatch is looking for a kill onto Dark Raider now. They get the follow-up stun. Slark runs right into the ice path and is not able to follow through with any sort of kill. A nice play by Dragon Knight there with the Yules onto the axe. Yeah. Wow, that, that was such a huge heal. The fight recap, he did all of the damage in that fight, 5,500 out of his It actually saved them, I think. If Axe wasn't Yules, he would have just uh, died there, the Shadow Fiend. That I mean. was insane, actually. That, that Axe, it's not only for those extra 10 souls, despite, like, you have the two souls per dam or two damage per soul, so your Axe gives you an extra 40 damage as well, or 50 if you count the stats. But uh, the, the secondary Requiem that comes out that heals you up is so overwhelmingly strong. Uh, that's the first time I've really seen it do that much work. I'm gonna pressure high ground a bit here, but it's gonna back away now. Doing that against a Coddle, even with one dead, mm -hmm. Axe does have the ability to buy back, and they don't really know that. They don't want to put themselves in a bad position either. It's just hard to push in daytime against that. Like, Black Hole, this Blink Black Hole is really reliant on getting, like, a sneaky play. And there's no sneaking up on this Coddle AoE vision. It's just insanely big. And he has a gem too, so there's no sneaky, you know, Invis Rune or Shadow Blade plays that could come out. So Nygma are going to go a uh, Lincoln Sphere now, and there's actually going to be no way to cancel this Black Hole now. Uh, yeah, they would need Lincoln's. multiple. They would need multiple heroes to do that. Oh wait, you're right. You're right. There is no way, unless they pop the Lincolns beforehand. Yeah, unless but... they pop the Lincolns beforehand somehow. But if he stays far enough back, BKBs and then blinks in, it won't be canceled. He could still die to it because all the blade mail damage, maybe. But I, I really like that itemization. I 
As for the axe, he's actually been sitting on a lot of gold, but he doesn't want to buy out quite yet. I mean, he did complete a Bashivas kind of recently. Mm -hmm. Almost um, as a BKB up. So he went for he went for the BKB or he tried to go for the BKB first so he has the Ogre Club and then I think he went back for the Shivas and then is gonna finish up now the BKB. So this itemization on cakes, the Ember Spirit. This is weird to me. Is this is this standard? I don't know, he went for the Blade Mail bots Blink, Maelstrom, and then Octarine. I feel like he just doesn't do damage. And I mean, this was a build in like the old Ember when he had like the cooldown reduction. Mm -hmm. But I'm not so sure because I've seen Embers do like different things nowadays. Yeah. I've even seen some Embers go for the cooldown reduction instead of the Searing Chains and have more of a right clicky build. Mm -hmm. Having the cooldown reduction is really nice if you're not reliant on those chains to do all your damage. And I guess he's not really reliant on them to do all of his damage at this point, but they still do a very significant amount. And if you have somebody locked down without a BKB for 5 seconds duration, it's just very annoying. The new root mechanics are so strong. I think it's an okay build. I mean, he's not the main damage dealer. He's not the one who's going to be in there at this point. It's the Slark who's going to do that. So just staying back and creating the space for the Slark to attack Definitely can just uh, work out for them. Speaking of these talents, we see Slark is almost at level 25. He also has a very similar thing with that Pounce Leash. It's uh, not quite a root, but that is very annoying to play against because you're stuck there for 6.5 seconds on an 8 second cooldown. So you could be almost permanently stuck there if you don't have a way to break it. And another hero that's almost 25 is Axe. Uh, actually, the Axe talents... Armor. Do, do you go the armor because you're against all this minus armor? Yeah, I think it definitely does. Okay. I mean, the right. battle hunger is actually pretty absurd, but... In this top lane, there is an attempted kill on the cakes. He almost... Yeah, no, he almost lived, but he goes down at the end. They don't have to use Black Hole for it, and he's down There's for 100 no seconds, no buyback. Luckily, the creep waves are in Cornell's favor. Nothing is on their side I of the mean, river. They have Coddle. I still think they defend here, but... No, if, if, they, if they have a mentality of let's force a buyback here, and then they start pushing and they realize there's no buyback, they could be in a very good position to take a set of racks. And Roche could be potentially spawning um, in anywhere from uh, 30 seconds. We're going to go down minutes. bottom. Oh. Yeah, he, he went down to stop the shove, and then just Axe and Slark. Yeah, it was a nice setup by the Axe, he was there, prepared. The same thing's gonna happen again, maybe, to Dragon Knight. Yep, Dragon Knight is caught out bottom. They do have a lot of damage for him, but he manages to Yules himself up. The, uh, the, the call does go through and it misses, and now Dragon Knight will get away here. At the same time, Keeper went down and bought back in. Uh... And the return, the chase. Stony Brook is just getting so many kills in this mid lane. Yes, they lost Weaver bottom. Yeah, but Slark's gonna take a rack, so they don't do something about this. Yeah, he has nine essence shift. A little bit of a I bonus. Think what has but... TP? Shadow Fiend actually doesn't. Shadow Fiend's making the walk of shame back. Sorry guys, I forgot a TP. But with a black hole here, they could look for a kill on Slark. They have a stun here. They have him locked down for enough time. Shadow Fiend is almost close. They should just black hole it. He gets it right on the edge for some reason, but it will be... Oh, it is enough. That last stomp comes out despite Slark ulting. Will bring down the Slark. And Axe has no mana to dunk. He is also going to go down. I guess it was on cooldown as well from that earlier missed one. So both Slark and Axe go in a little bit too aggressive bottom lane. They do manage to get the tier 3. But at the cost of both of their lives, that is not Magic really worth Hero it. took the tier 3 mid as well, so... Uh, There's yeah, definitely nice. SB favored there. I mean, like I was saying, this is this is the prime time for Stony Brook. They do get outskilled maybe in the ultra late game, but a double black hole that might come out and uh, this this push is pretty pretty menacing. I eight idolons. <laughs> now also the idolon bonus. How strong is that actually? You have eight extra, so you have eleven in total that can double into twenty two. Is that correct? Yeah. Yep, it's kind of absurd. But against an axe, I don't know if that's necessarily the right skill. You don't really want to be spinning against 30 units hitting you. <laughs> Alright, so SBU is committing for a push here. They don't have black hole, but they are going a little bit deep. Slark, Slardar does end up going down and forces Slark to oh, buy back here. Raider's ultimate. Yeah, it just does so much work. But Embers is now in with his BKB and ultimate active. They have to be on the retreat from Stony Brook. They don't have black hole. They don't have Slardar. 
And oh, that's three heroes, four heroes dead from Ember, er, from Cake's Ember Spirit. And now this Enigma is trying to get away, but he might not. Is this gonna be a rampage for Cake's? No, Ember steals it from Ember. <laughs> that's unfortunate. They're gonna look for Roche, but that is one of the latest spawns possible. That's like a full 10 minute and 55 second spawn, I believe. So uh, given that they had to use buybacks there on the Slark and the Axe. Yeah, it's unfortunate, but considering that they got a five-man team wipe, it's not the end of the world. And now, now they have SS shift. the buybacks onto SBU, and that gives both teams a win condition now. If they just kill the Slark, yep. Axe, or whoever ends up buying back here for SBU, Jakiro has already done so. And they're going to try to save the others if they can. Enigma is spawning soon. Weaver doesn't actually have buybacks, so they're just going to get racks. Yeah, they, they go right from the melee Rex bottom into this mid lane. They realize that range Rex doesn't provide nearly as much uh, pressure as this uh, mid lane would. And Slark has decent uh, essence shifts. They actually go for a kill on to only hope. He pops out for only a second, but Axe gets a blink call. They follow it up with a charge and an ember blink. And now that's one dead. They might look to get another one here off of it. Slardar does get called up, and meanwhile Slark is zoning out this Enigma. Enigma does have uh, ultimate ready, but... These heroes are just going in one by one and dying, and it's a very rough defense from Stony Brook here if they keep this up. The preemptive uh, hit from Cake stops the blink on Dragon Knight, or on the Slardar. And that's going to be a second full wave, wave going down. Up to full HP as well as all of his heroes as well. Alright, Cornell, huge comeback. They get a team wipe into two full sets of racks and two kills extra that are just like extra pickoffs. Are we going to run over time? Is this what's going to happen? Yep. There is another game scheduled to be starting up pretty much now, but this game might it looks like it's going to go into a game 3 with uh, Cornell uh, sealing the deal here. They know, oh, Roche is up, Stony Brook is going right for it, but Cornell well, sniffs this out. Keep in mind out. that SBU can still win this. They didn't have to use any of their buybacks there except for Chikiro. That's true, and there's and an the easy pickoff and a Spirit his. Breaker here. He's, oh yeah, he will go down. Savior does get his ult off before it goes down. He will get called up, but that's not too bad a uh, deal. One for one so far. The Black Hole comes out and it gets only the Slark. Slark! Slark. They don't have the way to kill they him don't though! don't get him. Okay, that's a big, that's, that's huge. They do kill Embers and he does have to buy back on Ember Spirit, but four dead. No buyback on two. If they force Shadowfiend buyback, I assume Shadowfiend will buyback here. And the actually the on Slark is huge right now, because they have a Vlad's buffing it up. He's like a monster right Hits now. for 300 base damage, and now they're going to get only hope. He goes out a little bit too far, uses that Sentry Ward, and gets punished for it. Now that's three dead, no buyback. Backdoor is disabled, and they're just going for the game. They don't care about Roche, they don't care about top. Black Hole is up. I think he used a sneaky refresher that he just got in base. He could have hit it, but he uh, just leaves it in his inventory. And now, you know, this is David versus Goliath. It's a 2v5. Their tier 4s are going down, and they're getting constantly harassed back into their fountain. Okay, yeah. So, uh, the, uh... Aghanim has worked out for Shadowfiend in, like, one fight there, but then the BKBs just came out onto Axe and Slark. And then There's the Black Hole. Like... It's onto 2, but Embers has just taken their base. The Slark doesn't really care. They have the buy or they have the Fortify. They will get one, they will get two, but that's not quite enough. Stop, stop. Good e game. E Cornell takes game two. An impressive oh game from Cornell. I thought this was gonna be another classic. Stony Brook takes the mid and late game once they, you know, get that little bit of uh, comeback. But Cornell playing it smart, playing it safe, and they slowly bring it back into their favor through the split pushing and just spreading the map. With the Rutgers classic Ember Slark, they take game two. All right. Well, with that, is there any uh? Band gaming player MVP or a team game band together moment of the match? Any that you can think of in particular? Man, I gotta actually give it to that fight mid where they bought back. Because the... that won them that won them the game. The axe buying back and yeah. the Slark buying back, and they showed they knew like this was their moment to win the game, and they claimed it. Like overall, the fight wasn't like that impressive in terms of execution, but the fact that they just got in there and started the fight and knew exactly that what they needed to do and it ended up winning them the game mm -hmm. and that really went down to not really a single player it was just all of them realizing that we could just win the game off of this fight if we play this well and they got a full five man wipe got two racks on it 
and I mean, won the game from there. All right. Well, thank you for watching, everybody. There is going to be Game 3 coming very shortly between Stony Brook and Cornell. This is going to be the elimination game between these two teams to see who can play in round of uh, eight playoffs, the Elite Eight, to get their shot at the Toronto land. Uh, we are going to give you a quick word from one of our sponsors and then be back to you shortly. Thank you for watching.